All right. All we right. got that Miss Keisha Drummond, the the, the, the quarterback at home. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably – let me ask you this. So we talk about your dad, right, and some of the things your dad has done. What are some things that you feel that you've gotten from your mama that's helped you on in sports? <laughs> a lot. She keeps me on, on top of my grades mm. all the time. Mm-hmm. That's a big thing. That's a big thing. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> Screenshots every day. Oh, CJ used to get that oh, from Gina. Man. She would do that to him. She would get in that oh, power man. school. When she got into that, that parent portal, it was like their life was over. It was over with. <laughs> it was over with. Yeah, so I definitely get what you're saying. I'm telling you. I I, I promise you I've not been through anything that you have not been, <laughs> been through. I promise you. I promise you. So, no, I hear you on that with the grades and, and all that. The keep it up. So what else do you think you've gotten from your mama that helps you on the court and on the field? A lot. Like, we have, like, such a close relationship. Like, we can just, like, talk. Like, sometimes she just helped me or get my mind mentally, like, back in the game. Mm -hmm. If I'm, like, out of it or whatever, she'll just, like, calm me down, stuff like that, keep me on track. Okay. Okay. Well, Keisha, just just kind of just kind of introduce yourself, tell everybody who you are, and uh, then I just want you to share what it's like being in a house full of sports people, mm. like from your husband to your son, and you've seen this like from little because Bryson's been playing a long time, what at least five years old yeah. for yeah. basketball, and uh, probably six for football and whatever mm -hmm. that. So you've been doing this thing a long time, and so you've been been that like I said the quarterback at home for this oh yeah um it's been a struggle when <laughs> Derek was coaching him it was the most difficult yeah <laughs> they would go at it like on the floor and Joe Owens and Ron would have to come in and physically like separate them because <laughs> he is so strong will Derek is so strong will I have a strong personality we all just everybody just everybody getting it yeah. <laughs> Joe and Ron like just chill we got this we got this so finally luckily Derek looks up to them and respects them that right. he can take that from them right and so that's why they were the best people to be able to coach him yeah. because you know, when you do have an involved dad, you have to have those male personalities that can hear the dad's point of view yeah. and can listen to the kid and say, look, this is what we're doing for the betterment of the child. Right. So they were the best starter coaches. That now, don't you have a had. counseling background? Yes, I'm a therapist. <laughs> so that has worked well now. And he didn't realize that. He said, well, mom, if you're a therapist, why can't you help me? I said, like, listen to me. But when I try to give him tidbits, he's getting better now. He listens. But we used to go at it on the floor. He'll swat his hand at me when I'm yelling, get to the basket. But now he'll hit his chest. He'll be like, my bad. He knows that, you know, I'm only trying to say what's best for him. Right, he, right. He's definitely maturing as an athlete. Well, I, so I'm glad you said that. So tell me what the transformation that you've seen from him, from baby Bryson, now to grown man, pretty yeah. much. I heard you driving and yes, been sir. through a couple of cars. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> set up plays and we like had it run that back put that to the back <laughs> so he just would take off we have footage that my cousin kept and we look at it and I send them to him and we laugh at him now um, and so he was such a ball hog and then by 11 he started going to that awkward stage where he didn't want to be the ball hog. He mm -hmm. tried to include everyone mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. but that wasn't his strong suit. And mm -hmm. so he wasn't performing well. Yeah. And I can remember um, we were at a tournament in Forest City, and he was coaching to try to tell Ron and what he needed to do. And like I said, it's just so great that Ron has been his dad's friend for all these years. He was like, he's doing what Derek has always done. Right. He's always coached. Wow. Even at 11. Wow. Um, and so he's, get, he's finding his niche. Football. He was just a stocky kid, and we just was like, you need to be doing something. So yeah. at six, he was playing tackle. And I felt like it was like dog fighting. And he was, oh, he down there crying. <laughs> he <laughs> cry every practice. I did not want to play. I did not want to play. Dog fight. Man, if you don't like no parallel here. <laughs> and so my second son, he didn't play till he was about eight or nine. I was like, I'm not going to put my child. Because it was traumatic for me as a mom. Right. To crying watch them on the, feet, on the floor just 
getting up and now one of the kids he used to play with, I said, no, Makai, wasn't Bryson crying at practice? He was like, no, he wasn't. I said, yes, he was. <laughs> he was crying. But um, it made him stronger. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, you know, he's played football, but he wasn't quarterback until eighth grade, seventh or eighth grade. I think, yeah, seventh grade. Um, Milo mm. was his instrumental yeah. football coach. And you know, him and Milo, they go at it. And one time they played some kids that were too old. And Bryson was like, Milo, go get us killed out here. <laughs> <laughs> Milo was like, boy, just get out there and play. And that has made the mental toughness, like, it's a smooth transition. Because, right. like you said, if you can play for your dad and a Milo Campbell, well, anything anybody else says, like, that's just pouring waters off a of duck. Yeah, You're not right. even, it's not even going to phase you. Right. So right. he just stepped out and then um, he played D-team and JV. But his sophomore year last year, the first year as a quarterback, I just couldn't believe how great he was. Like, I've never thought I'd be a football mom. Basketball, like I tell everybody, basketball comes so easy for him. It's almost like breathing. Right. He really doesn't have to work hard at it. It's just natural. But football, that took work. And I think that's what made him like it so much more because he had to work hard at it. It, yeah. it, it wasn't given to him. His dad wasn't a football coach. So right. nobody said, oh, your daddy put you on the field. Right, His dad right. wasn't out there. Right. It was something that he could do for himself. That's a good point. And Mozzie has been such the coach and the, the mediator right now. Mm -hmm. Because Mozzie knows the stress of the drumming name mm -hmm. and the pressure that comes with that. Right, right. But he doesn't put that on him at all. That's awesome. And he takes that off of him and he lets him know, you go be great. And he tells anybody that comes in contact with him, he can be the best drumming basketball, football player that ever was because wow. of all the shoulders that he's on. That's true. That's so he stuff. has so many great mentors. I remember when I was pregnant with him. And I said, you know, I want a son. I said, because I want to show these women how to do it right. <laughs> well, little did I know. You talk about the village. Right. Oh, it takes a village. Yeah. And that, and I prayed for that. I asked for God to put strong black men around him. And that's what he's done. That's awesome. My stepdad, my dad, my uncles, everybody pours into him. And it was because I've been praying for 17 years that he had this. And so he is just growing into a tremendous young man, and I couldn't be more proud. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah.